What's up, guys? I am Gaijin, the artist. Uh, thanks for tuning in, checking out what I'm doing. Today, I'm gonna be working on my Sharky figure. But before I start working on my Sharky figure, I'm gonna give you guys a little bit of background about why I do it and why I create this character as a figure. So what this will be called is art toys. Art toys go back a long way. I've been doing art toys for about five years, but even before that, there's just so much history behind it. Still very much underground in a sense, although we do have companies that have made it a lot more bigger and more mainstream, such as Pop Toys. Everybody's very familiar with Pop Toys and Funko. They've been doing it very well um, and have become very successful using the final art platform, the art toy platform. So, like I said, I got into it about five years ago. I used to work for a store called Dragatomi, which was a great place for me to understand how art toys work. And I got to meet a lot of the creators of the and pioneers of art toys and urban vinyl. But during my time of like growing as an artist, I would dabble in sculpture and I just through trial and error learned how to make art toys on my own using resin casting. I first obviously had to learn how to sculpt. Then I had to learn how to resin cast. And I would say for about four out of the five, six years that I've been doing it, I was messing up a lot of figures and I was wasting a lot of money, but that's just part of the game of art. It takes a lot of time and a lot of patience in order to get to a certain level. Um, I mean, you could put out whatever you want to at whatever level, but for me personally, I felt like I needed to take the time to understand how to make things look very presentable. And that's where I feel I'm at today. So that's just a little quick backstory. If you guys want to learn more, make sure to click the link in my description to go to my blog. My blog is going to give you a more in-depth breakdown of the history of art toys and a little bit more about like how I get down with art toys and so my figure that I finally reached to after years and years of trial and error is my Sharky figure if you're not familiar with Sharky please after this video go on my site take a look at all the artwork I've created with my Sharky character he was not the first figure I created some of you guys also have seen me create the donut the donut was the beginning of me saying like i'm here to present a good figure that can be sold and produced and now i have sharky who complements the donut very well because those two are my main focuses for my branding for my art everything i do surrounds around those guys they are the world of forever hungry this figure this art figure essentially is me taking my painting of sharky and then pulling him out and putting him on a desk that's the way that you think about art toys. It's just another form of art that can be right there in front of your face, three-dimensional. Um, you still wanna take care of it like an art piece. You don't wanna just play with it as a toy. Just because it's called art toys does not mean it's meant to be played with. It's not meant to be played with at all. Take care of it. Make it last for as long as it can. Um, these art toys that artists create will last for a long time because we seal it seal it up you know we make sure that it is able to sit on a shelf and not fall apart at least majority of us do and so without further ado we have sharky this is the guy you know this is the figure that i've decided to come up with this is the figure that represents me i decided to make him flat because that's how i present him in a lot of my designs and creations but also i feel like it looks great to sit on a, a desk or a table. Sharky's look and feel is to, supposed to be as if he's popping out of the water or he's peeking up or, you know, he's in every environment, but he's still living as a shark. You know, sharks are obviously swimming under and they can pop up. You see the fin. So that's the idea that I give with this character. So that was just a quick description. I will stop talking and I'll move on to actually painting this figure. And while I'm painting, I'll give you guys a little bit of background on how I paint figures and the techniques I go through to get the paint smooth, blah, 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 whoop de what Yeah. So let's move on to that. So this is my lineup of Sharkies that are ready to be painted. These guys are all primered up, sanded down. They're smoothed up. I sand them with uh, about 1500 grit sandpaper, wet sand, so that way they can be nice and smooth because you don't really want to super texture figure. I, that kind of just like kills the presentation. So in order for them to be smooth, sand them down. 
So when us artists don't have a certain color that we can get straight from a bottle, we mix our paints. What I'm using is good old Apple Barrel. This brand is very cheap, but it actually works very well if you know how to manipulate it. The white that I use to mix in is straight from Blick. They're nice when it comes to pricing. Stir joints, paint cups. Make sure you got the caps so that way you can save those colors. But I start by just eyeballing the colors and sometimes I'll test it out on white paper or sometimes I could look at it and know that it's the color that I want. And I've got to that point just by mixing for so long. is mixed ready to go move on to the next step which is painting now when I paint my figures I do like a layering job I guess you would say so I start by thinking about what colors are underneath or on top of what colors so for this figure the inside of the mouth I would start first then I would move on to the teeth then I would move on to the full body and then finally since I use a, like black on this, I'd go to painting the black eyes and then outlining the, te the teeth. That's the best way, in my opinion, to paint pretty much anything. But I know everybody has their different type of techniques and this is mine. So now I'll show you guys how that gets done. I will stop once I get to the body and I'll go over how I achieve a smooth texture with paint. So now I've finished the inside of the mouth, the teeth, and the highlights are shadows of the teeth. That is what I'm calling layering. Start from the bottom, move your way all the way to the top. Lastly, I'm gonna paint the last color all over Sharky, but I decided I'd give you guys some tips on how I go about painting and how I go about getting like a smooth texture. It's pretty simple, it's nothing too crazy. Obviously, this only applies to those of you that want to achieve some texture with your art. If you have more of a looser texture or whatever, then I've, this wouldn't be the route you would take. But, all right. First, we start off with our paint, number three. Then, I'm gonna get my towel over here. I pretty much, through time, have come up with this system of dipping my paint in water letting some of the water go, not all of it, kind of just like lightly brushing and then dipping a little bit of paint, like that much. Even there's hair on it. that shit off. All right, once you got that, you never, ever, ever want to glob your paint on. Start off light, do light layers, and I'll show you what happens after that.
So that's how it should look. It's gonna look transparent, but guess what? If you keep going at the same level of transparency and lightness of your layers, making sure that it's not too globby, there's the right amount of water in there to spread the paint evenly. And you have to do these layers about, I would say the maximum eight times, sometimes five will do it based on your color pigment. Then by the time you've reached those last layers of five to eight, it'll be like a solid, smooth color. You won't have any breath, breath, brush strokes or anything crazy like that. And you'll be good to go. Your paint will look smooth. And obviously it takes a lot of time to do this, but keep that handy dandy hair dryer on deck you know, um, always stay strapped and you will be moving through this painting a lot quicker. So now I'm gonna finish up the base color of the body and then move on to line work. finally reached a good stopping point for the layering on the paint. It took forever for me to actually layer this. This is about 10 to 11 coats. Red tones, red hues are always tough to work with. That's why I don't really like messing around with red paint because it just takes so long for you to get a solid color. It's always transparent no matter what company brand I use of paint, it's always the same. But this guy's looking good. As you can see up close, you can see you know, it's very smooth. It's not all like chunky, brush strokey. And once you put the clear coat on it, it even gets smoother. Now I'm move on to outlining his teeth and making his eyes black. And with that, I use golden black. Um, I'll use the high flow acrylics, but mix it in with the cheap stuff. And that way I could get kind of more of a uh, smoother texture with it because this stuff it flows very very liquidy like I mean it's like water and I don't like that I need just a little bit of grab on my paint so I'll mix it in with the cheap stuff and then I'll get like this good consistency of smoothness and grab with the paint um, and as far as outlining all I can say is take your time that's it line work is nothing too tricky like honestly you get your black paint you get a brush that you're comfortable with. I use many different kinds of brushes, but this is the one I'm using today. Okay, it doesn't want to focus on it. Whatever, just get you a thin brush. Honestly, it just takes a lot of patience and a lot of your time and a lot of focus and you finding a technique that works best for you. Everybody outlines differently. A lot of different artists use so many different techniques to make sure that their lines are crispy and smooth. I pretty much just go for it and put all my attention to that line. So find yourself a brush you're comfortable with, find your paint, like I said before, dip it, not too much. And when you create your line, just go for it. Try to stay as steady and still as you can so maybe you'll stop breathing. Like, that's what I do. I just like hold my breath. That's an okay line. Like for things like this, you can just like slowly go against it and clean it up. So your line is better. And that's pretty much it. Uh, there's nothing else to it than to just do it. And with that being said, I'll move on to outlining the teeth.
is now finished. And as we can see, he is nice and strawberry pink colored. This is the color I wanted. I wanted him to be more of a strawberry versus the normal magenta that I use for my figures. So yeah, this is part of my Shrekey spring color line that we'll be releasing soon, possibly uh, early March, mid-March, but it will feature standard colorways of spring colors of my Sharky figure. Nothing too crazy. What you saw me painting was a basic colorway. Sometimes I get kind of crazy, add some prints, but for what I'm doing here, I don't want to do any prints. I just want these nice color tones that complement each other and go well. And now that I have the painting process done, I move on to clear coating. I move on to sealing it with whatever I feel, either resin or I'll do a like acrylic lacquer spray. You know, you can airbrush it, you can buy a rattle can. There's many ways to do it. But if you have any questions or feedback on how to paint figures, uh, maybe further into the design element or any other questions you might have, leave a comment below. I'll be more than happy to respond to you. You can even email me, that's fine. Also remember to check the blog and it will give you some insight on what art toys are, what urban vinyl is. I'll even give a little bit more in-depth tips on each part of the process and how it works. The materials I use, the tools I use to do the sculpting and the sculpty and the resin and all that good stuff. That's pretty much all I have for this video. You guys can feel free to follow me on Instagram or actually just check the description because I got Instagram, Twitter, TikTok and everything posts different things. So I'll leave all the links in the description. Visit my website. Got some cool stuff on there that you guys should check out. I hope this video was very informative to at least some of you guys. If it wasn't, I'm sorry. Like I said, leave a comment. I'll get back to you. Let me know what you guys want. Let me know what you guys think. But until then, I'm out of here. I got more work to do. I'm Gaijin. I'll catch you guys next time. Eat the